All right, suppose we have an M by N matrix A, and we get an N by M matrix B from rotating A 90 degrees clockwise on paper. Why would you do this? I don't know, but I guess we can look into what um, if A and B have the same singular values. And basically what I did at first was I set up a MATLAB thing to just take a let a be just a random two by three matrix so i think what i did was um the entries of a would be just a random number between zero and one plus i times a random number between zero and one and then take it and so that'll be a then let b be the same thing rotated clockwise which i need to figure out a formula for and i I figured that out and I'll explain that in the proof. Um, but after looking at A and B, um, finding the singular values, they seem to have the same singular values. Um, and then I noticed that just by messing around with them in MATLAB, I noticed this thing, that the, the complex conjugate of A star A is equal to B times B star. And so that seemed interesting, and I was like, maybe that's how you solve this exercise, and it turns out that is, that, that's how you do it. So, we are going to prove that A and B do have the same singular values. So, you can check from the procedure for obtaining B, that B, that the entries of B satisfy B i j equals A m minus j i for i and j in these ranges. So the the way I sort of figured this out was I literally just took a random two by three matrix. I wrote like a11, a12, a13, a21, a22, a23. Then I rotated it clockwise and figured out the relation um, just just by looking at the different entries. So you can either like I don't know how you would like prove this rigorously, but you can sort of just see it from actually taking a matrix and rotating it. Um, it just works out this way. So anyways, so this is how we're going to, and this is how I put, I constructed B in my um, MATLAB code. I use this formula. You take A, M minus J, and I, and of course M is the largest index that J can possibly be. Um, wait a minute, is this... So if J ranges from no, this isn't good. If A range if J ranges from one to M, then this is going to range from zero to M minus one. So we have to add one here. So this is M minus J plus one. Okay, right because let's see here. Okay, okay. So that so so that needs to change. What else? What else do we need to change? So m minus k plus 1, m minus k plus 1. Okay, good. All right, so we have this. So we have this formula for bij in terms of the aijs. Um, and so next, because we want to get at this equation, complex conjugate of a star a equals b times b star, we compute these two things. And so first we have a star a, which is... Um, well, this is A star, and this is A. So A star, you take the complex conjugate of everything, and then you transpose it. So that should be a 1 here. I don't know why I have I n instead of 1 n. So this should be A 1 n. Okay, and that's good. And then if you if you sort of imagine what would happen when you multiply these out, I literally just did the four corners here. Oh, this also, these dots should be over here. Wow, this is a really messy solution. But yeah, if you if you write this out, or if you figure out the um, the four corners, you can sort of fill in the blank what things depend on what. So first of all, if you take this row, multiply by this column, you get this thing. Um, so all of them will match. And then you multiply this row by this column, and you get this sum, and so on and so forth. So we see here that we always have a k something a k something and the first thing has a complex conjugate and the thing next to the first k is going to be the row number 
and the thing next to the second K is the column number. And so therefore, um, so therefore we see that the IJ entry of A star A is the sum from K equals, so the sum from K equals 1 to M of AKI conjugate AKJ is going to be the IJ entry of A star A. So I guess here what I should do is I should write this as this is equal to A star here. So this equals, we take A star A, we take the IJ entry, and we take the complex conju conjugate here. That's what, that's what I'm really doing. And then this is equal to this thing. Because this matrix up here, up here shows us that the IJ entry of the matrix A star A is this sum. Then similarly, we have a similar looking matrix for B times B star. Um, here the Ks are always um, the rightmost index. And then, so it's B something K, then complex conjugate of B something K. And next to the first K, you have the row number. And next to the second K, you have the column number. That's just how it works out if you do the matrix multiplication. Okay, so we'll use the notation Mij to refer to the Ij entry of the matrix M. Then we have the following equation for each I and J. So if you take A star, so I and J are going to be between 1 and N because A star A, A is N, A is M by N, so A star is N by M, so A star times A will be N by N. Okay, so if we take this this matrix and we take its ij entry, it's obviously going to be the complex conjugate of this matrix, and so we have this formula, and when you take the complex conjugate of a sum, you just bring it inside, and so the two complex, complex conjugates will cancel on the first term, and we'll get one on the second term. And now if we're taking this sum from k equals 1 to m, that's the same thing, instead of taking k equals 1 to m, we could take k equals m all the way down to 1. Um, because you're just uh, moving around the terms in the sum. And that will give you this thing, which using our formula for the bijs is equal to this thing. And this is the ij entry of b, b star, if you uh, compare this to this. Right, because j will correspond to... Let's see here. So here, the thing that corresponds to the first thing is the row number. And the thing that corresponds to the, here. The, this doesn't look right. There should be a K sum here. This should be B K I? No. Should be B I K and P and B J K. Yes. Yes, and that works with this formula as well. Okay, so 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 now we have this, and again, B I K that will be the ith row jth column. Yes, that's how this works. Okay, good. So everything's good. So the I J entry of A star A conjugate is the same as the I J entry of B B star, and therefore these two matrices are equal. Okay, and so now. If A star A is Hermitian, then it has real eigenvalues. We proved that in a previous exercise, and it's just a linear algebra fact. So, lambda is an eigenvalue of A star A, if and only if A star A V equals lambda V for some non-zero eigenvalue V, if and only if, well, if you take the complex conjugate of this equation, you get complex conjugate A star A times complex conjugate V. This is going to be lambda V, the complex conjugate of lambda v, and you take the complex conjugate of lambda and you just get lambda because lambda is real. And of course you get v here, so this means that lambda is an eigenvalue of a star a conjugate with eigenvector given by v conjugate. So therefore, the non-singular values of a are the square roots of the non-zero singular values of a star a. This a should, this a should not be 
in the superscript. But yeah, this was Theorem 5 point something? 5.4, 5.5? But anyways, so the non-zero, the square roots of the non-zero eigenvalues of A star A are the square roots of the non-zero eigenvalues of A star A conjugate as well, because even though the eigenvectors are different for these two matrices, the eigenvalues themselves are the same. Okay, so these are the square roots of the non-zero eigenvalues of A star A conjugate, which is the same as B times B star. And then using that theorem again, theorem 5.5 or whatever, the square roots of the non-zero eigenvalues of B times B star are the non-zero singular values of B. Thus, A and B have the same non-zero singular values, and obviously they have the same other singular values because all the other singular values are zero, and so those are all the same. So therefore, A and B have the same singular values, and this completes the proof. Um, so yeah, this is kind of a tricky question because um, you have to come up with this A star A conjugate equals B times B star, and I remember like if you if you take a times A star and compare it to B star times B, the matrices look sort of similar, but there's not like a clear relationship. When I looked at like two by three matrices A, um, I got a two by two matrix where basically it was almost like the, the relation between the two would be, it, it was almost the transpose, but it's sort of like you would do the transpose down the other diagonal. And I'm not sure what the general formula for that would have been or if it would have been useful. But there happens to be a useful formula if you look at A star A conjugate and B times B star. Look, If you look at these in particular, then you will find this equality. Um, but anyways, so we have this really strange operation that we can use on a matrix A. And I don't know why you would do it. I don't know if it's useful at all in any way ever. But it ends up preserving singular values. And so this completes the proof.